This diagram gives the details of the surplusing arrangement. This is the plan of the surplus beer and uh, this side of it is the other dam, this side is the high ground. The surplus water comes from here and overflows over the weir and uh, goes down further to join the dip or to join the valley. So a small surplus course also will have to be constructed for about 1 meter or half a meter width till it joins the dip or the valley. The surplus course will get formed after some years but then the leading channel for the surplus course has got to be excavated in order that the water may safely discharge into a dip. Later on after a period of functioning for several years it will form its own course by scouring or by erosion and it will develop a natural regime till it joins the main dip. Now let us see what are the features of this surplus weir. The surplus weir has got rough stone packing. The entire thing here is the rough stone apron. It is nothing but uh, rubble stone without usage of cement mortar, dry rubble stone apron. The dry rubble stone apron is intended for safe passage of water without erosion. And on the sides of it there will be revetment. Uh, this is the toe of the other dam and uh, revetment will be on the upstream side as well as on the sides of the apron and also for some distance on the downstream side. Here on the high ground side also there will be some revetment on the toe as well as on the flanks. This is the cross section of the apron. There is an upstream toe wall and then the apron and a downstream toe wall. The dimensions are given here. This would be about 2 meter uh, width apron and uh, this will be a nominal uh, drop wall of rough stone only for uh, prevention of uh, undermining and uh, uh, the effects of uh, erosion this uh, toe wall is needed and uh, such simple structure would be costing a very small amount because only dry rubble stone only is used and no cement mortar used anywhere here. Let us see now the longitudinal section of the uh, surplus weir. Uh, this is the crest of the weir, top level of the weir and any water level above this will overflow over the weir and the maximum water level that would be reached is shown here for about 0.4 meter depth. So when there is no overflow the water level will be just at this level. When there is overflow it will start rising, the water level starts rising and as the discharge gets increased more and more discharge comes into the uh, mini percolation tank this water level rises up and this would be the ultimate maximum water level when the peak discharge is overflowing over the surplus weir. And the amount of flood it has to overflow and the design of this weir has got to be according to the catchment area it drains. For example, if this structure has a catchment area of about 5 hectares, then we need only 1.7 meter length of surplus weir. If it is on the other hand 10 hectares of catchment, we would need 1.7 into 2 that is 3.4 meters would be the length of the surplus weir. And for the purpose of calculation of the maximum flood discharge, we have considered the maximum intensity of precipitation of uh, rainfalls uh, given by India Meteorological Department for a return period of 25 years. That means in a period of 25 years whatever maximum rainfall has occurred in that particular region. So that rainfall is considered for the purpose of discharge. So the maximum water level corresponds to a 1 in 25 year rainfall year. So that means this type of maximum flood would occur only once in 25 years and in the other years it will be less than that. This is provided for a 25 year return period because all these structures will have to be stable for a period of 50 to 100 years. That means the other dam should not get breached 
on account of any rainfall event that occurs during its lifetime. So this amount of length is provided for those considerations of rainfall occurring in that area for a return period of 25 years. For estimating the cost of such surplus weir, we require certain estimation of measurements and quantities. The quantities of rough stone required for various lengths of the surplus weir are given in a ready reckoner table that is supplied along with the guidelines. That means if once we know the length of the surplus weir, the quantities of earthwork excavation, rubble stone, tow wall, revetment on the sides, they are all given in the ready reckoner table pattern and their rates also are given there and the costs also are worked out. For example, if it is 1.7 meter length of the surplus weir, then automatically when you read the cost of it, it will work out to some amount, say 1200 rupees. If it were to be 3.4 meters length, it works out to another cost. Like that for various lengths of this surplus weir, we have the quantities of uh, various items of work and then the total cost at the end. So the ready reckoner, reckoner tables would give the quantities of various work components as well as the total cost. <laughs>